Hello, my soccer universe. Venezia are back in Serie A. They won the promotion play of yesterday, and I'm really, really pleased. Every time I buy a Venezia jersey, they get promoted. There is a streak in there. And so I decided, let's get out the third jersey from this season that I just bought in Venice in past October. So what a good coincidence there. And yes, they played in the home jersey, but I like this one a whole lot better. Um, We'll talk about the promotion playoff, we'll probably start even there, we'll talk about the last Serie A game, the game that never could be scheduled, was eventful, so we'll talk a little bit about that as well. But the majority of this video will be a Serie A review, I will go through all the teams very briefly, we'll look at the graphs, how their season went and maybe say a little bit there, uh, and then we'll summarize the season and look who did actually the best performance. We know Inter are the champions, but who actually had the overall best performance? And let's start in Serie B with the promotion playoff. I know this was the last thing. As I said, we had already Parma and Como uh, promoted, a very uh, historic team in Parma. One that I have not seen in Serie A in Como, but you know, right at the lake. Really nice that. And then we had uh, this big promotion player with a weird system that uh, if scores are level, then the higher ranked team would advance, except for the final, if the teams were level on points in the Serie B season, then it would go to overtime, but this was not the case. So if uh, the final would have ended all nil-nil, Venezia would have gotten promoted. So, but Gitkia in the 24th minute got Venezia the winning goal sees them go back up into Serie A. Will they survive this time around? This is always a big question, but not only will they bring a very unique color scheme, they will only will they bring uh, one of the most scenic stadiums. They bring something special. I always like when Venezia is there. I mean, just the fact that most of the teams have to go by boat to the stadium is just simply awesome. So very pleased with that one. Then the game that should have been played uh, in mid-March could not be scheduled because both teams had deep Coppa Italia runs, had deep European runs. Atalanta successful, Fiorentina, yeah, this was the disappointment uh, of the week. Uh, how they could not show up against an Ol Olympiakos side. That was honestly there for the take my again, goal scoring, letting Fiorentina down. Of course, why did it have to be postponed? Because Joe Baroni, the kind of the sporting director, uh, had a heart attack and subsequently died. So this was very much in memory of him as well. I thought since Atalanta can secure a third spot and Fiorentina is very, very safely in a, a, a eighth spot that Atalanta will have more motivation. But Fiorentina turned up and actually scored goals. And it was a really entertaining first half where Belotti, uh, a Castro really cross, heads it in. I mean, very uncharacteristic for him. Lukman showing his good form just a, a few few minutes later, making 1-1, one, one, the Catalaria assist. But then Nick Nick Gonzalez, I mean, he almost scuffs the shot, similar like in the um, uh, Conference League final Nzola did, but this time it goes in. And so it looks like Fiorentina, they are really showing up this, this, this time around. Scalvini, though, with a shot from the edge of, of the box, equalizes. And then probably the weirdest goal of the month, I think it was a corner kick. The ball gets uh, put in. Martinez, uh, there's Martinez Quartin, but it also kind of bounces between a few players. And it falls to the feet of Belotti, who is just a meter away from a wide empty net. Not even Belotti is going to miss this one. Um, Right after the half, I think it could have been uh, made a 4-2 for Fiorentina, but then the game kind of drizzled out, was also feeding with the weather. Also has to be noted, this was the last game of Daniele Orsato, the uh, famous Italian referee, who actually got a guard of honor, walking, I think, off the pitch. And also, you know, you could see he was very warmly greeted by the players. I think after the Champions League semi-final that he uh, re refereed, there were some tears there as well. Well, but uh, this was a much more positive ending to the season. I found it fitting that you put Orsato there, give him one last match, and because it doesn't happen often that you know you have one last match in Serie A that's got a little, little exposure. It would have been nice if there was a little bit more on the line. It would have been nicer for, for, for instance, if Atalanta, if they finish in fourth, then Roma would get the sixth spot in Champions League, blah blah. Did not happen, which leaves us now with the final Serie A table. Now taking this table and looking at the standings, we go from bottom to the top 
and let's look at how each team performed and I just want to say a little bit to everyone um, if we start here with Salernitana you see here to the left these are how the expected points total developed over the season the graph to the right shows you how the rating that I'm using uh, has developed over the season and with the white lines show all the competitors and you can see Salantana clearly uh, the latest starting in January was a downward turn that could only go one way to his relegation they were clearly the weakest team in Serie A and even showed in rating where everybody else was kind of pulling up Salantana always a downturn there was maybe a slight hope uh, towards the end of last year but never was happening for Salernitana. So Suolo was actually uh, much more you know mid to you know just above the, re the, the, the relegation zone but it really uh, came to, to, to get around this March window where you see a big drop and then suddenly Sassuolo found themselves in the relegation zone where they could not get themselves out of it. You see a one less gap, this was the win against Inter and this is a team that won twice against Inter and is getting relegated, the only two losses that Inter have. But Sassuolo uh, did not look good, it did not help, the Perardi was injured so they lost the tal talismanic uh, figure and so Sassuolo is going down after many many years. Frosinone was an enriching team to the league because under uh, Di Francesco they really went out, played nicely, played forward going. However, you see this stretch here uh, roughly from December to uh, um, uh, beginning of April, right around the um, international break where it was only down, 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 down and they were leaking goals left and right. However, they got themselves up. They had actually a good shot of surviving and then the last game of the season they lose at home to Udinese whereas Empoli just manage survival and that's why they're going down, which is a little bit sad. Empoli's uh, luck, you can also very much uh, follow here. They, on 15th of January, they hired David and Nick Nicola and that's exactly the point where suddenly the curve that was always going, going down, 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 where they only were the second worst team of the league, suddenly they move up they level up, they are getting out of the relegation zone and then they are actually kind of level and just staying above it. Yes, they probably should have gotten really relegated last day of season but it helped that Roma didn't have anything to play for in this one. And so a bad season turned actually much better. So I should have gone to Davide Nicola as they did before but was not to be. This time it was Empoli's charm uh, for them to survive. Cagliari, uh, very similar story, but you know, very um, always on the bottom. I mean, they were the uh, highest favorite of getting rele relegated. It didn't start well, but then they caught some steam, and especially towards the end, end of the season, uh, Ranieri's team pulled out a few victories that got them over the line and secured survival with a game to spare, which no one expected from this Cagliari side. Udine. Should have been a lower mid-table team, but things were not working well. And yes, they made a few changes, uh, most notably uh, bringing in the Fabio Cannavaro very, very late in April. And actually, they lost only one game during that time, but it was not easy for Udinese. Uh, you know, they went from Andrea Sotil to Gabriele Gioffi and then to Cannavaro. I'm a little bit worried about them overall going also in the next season. Uh, but you know, they always are kind of in this lower mid-table tier but if you look at the rating at least under Cannavaro it suddenly went up and so maybe that might be a good sign overall. Going for Lecce very early on uh, it seemed like they will survive and they played actually quite sensational at the, uh, at, at the beginning of the season. Yes they had this mid-season turn and of course uh, <laughs> there had to be a coach fired but this was not because of uh, their performance it was Roberto Taverso being completely uh, out, out of line. I think he headbutted uh, a, a player. Uh, so they brought in Luca Gotti from Udinese and Lecce were in pretty good safety. And again, a late season spell never saw them uh, enter the relegation picture. Hellas Verona is a side that you would have expected to get relegated, especially when in the winter break they had to sell off so many players to make a little bit money back in because the team got into real financial trouble. However, Marco Baroni used the spares, if you would like, and built a really good side that consistently got points 
and slowly slowly got even better stars i think and secured survival relatively late on i think this is kind of the last team where we could say they were in a relegation battle monza never was but monza it was never anywhere to to be honest mid table as mid table can can be they had survival uh, sewn up by the international break more or less and then they let it slide a little bit of course probably their win against against milan was uh their biggest one this season uh, at home but other than that you know monza solid side but not pushing for more at the moment genoa was also one of the promoted teams um where giladino has done really good work better and better feeling themselves was a real fun side of course as always uh, they give you a uh, challenge and starting mid-season they were also a mid-table team never in relegation trouble so this was a really good season for genoa outperforming their own expectations complete opposite napoli starting as the defending champions this was one of the worst title defenses ever i actually think i've seen a worse one in italy which was, was of course milan in 96 97 that finished in 11th place and that had actually quite a few star players to boot as well this napoli side never survived spalletti leaving and then a bad appointment after bad appointment Ru, rudy garcia what a crap appointment there that was who said he hasn't even seen Na napoli did not really work quickly. I mean, there were some signs that there is some, 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 some there. Then you bring in the master of disaster and Walter Mazzari, eight goals only down. And then you have Calzona, but the boat was already sinking. And if you look at the curve, Naples curve, this was one of the biggest disappointments. Yes, this can be such a great side to watch. But this side, yes, they did not survive this. And now Conta is coming. That's gonna be the next disaster, but at least it will be a little bit more fun. I think Napoli will perform a whole lot better. Notably, Napoli finished level on points with Torino, who took a completely different path there. Uh, and just because of the head to head, Tor Torino ahead. Torino is almost like Monza, going nowhere, but also never being too bad enough to uh, get threatened by rare relegation. Uh, the one thing I would wish for Torino that would make the season that they finally win a derby for once because even when you think they're favored over Juve they managed to lose this one I don't know what's hap happening there but overall Torino steady 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 I'm curious if coach Juric will be there next season as well Fiorentina a little higher level than Torino because you see the potential goal scoring let them down they had a deep European run again you see also in the expected points there were two peaks where you thought they might actually push maybe for a Europa League spot which I think would fit Fiorentina not badly but then you see the end of the season it's all more on a downturn overall and yes again you got Belotti in to help with their goal scoring, but it didn't really help because Belotti, ever since he left to Torino, cannot find his mojo anymore. Lazio, higher level than Fiorentina, but it was already the second place last season. It was a huge surprise. This season, yeah, uh, it did not work. You had also the tensions between Sarri and the club leadership that meant that he then resigned. And we had Igor Tudor coming in. Who then steadied the ship a little bit they won a derby they lost a derby so you know you had all these kind of things there overall a very middling season as it was for roma and you could see the negativity coming in through Mourinho, and uh, especially the first half of the season it was just level 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 then you bring in daniele de rossi the whole new atmosphere happens around the team there was a lot of positivity and uh, you gotta love De Rossi the way he's interacting with opponents yes he's there demanding as, as, as well but he, he it's also very heartfelt towards the end of the season yeah maybe not so great he got them the contract I don't know if this I would have waited until the end of the season to, to, to be honest for that one however there's hardly a different manager that would fit the role of a Roma coach than Daniele De Rossi because he's Roma through and through and yeah they managed to finish in the sixth place but roma like napoli would expect high i think those are teams that should shoot for 
top four places which is something you cannot say about Bologna the best story of, of the season they were sitting in fourth very comfortably for a long 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 time the only thing that was maybe a down downturn is that you see this dip in form around January this is also when they got eliminated in the Coppa Italia against Fiorentina I think if they would have stayed in there I mean they eliminated Inter for crying out loud if they would have been in full form, I think Bologna could have made a deep cup run as well. Probably even won it, to be honest, because they were an outstanding side. Real fun to watch you with Xerxes, Ferguson, Calafiore and the like. It was just so much fun to see Bologna play. They secured Champions League and then, yes, only a fifth spot. But for Bologna, this is a major win. For me, they are the Serie A story of the season they will play champions league that Dallara will host champions league games and this makes me so happy because it's such a great stadium just to see yes it could use maybe a little bit of tight atmosphere lose the track but just the tower i'm so happy that bologna are back Atalanta, look at the rating. Yes, they won the Europa League. That's why they got boosted up so much and they end the season as Italy's second strongest team, which probably is all right. But the one thing is that consistency is always letting Atalanta down. They can beat on their day anybody, with the exception possibly of Inter. However, they always have a performance in there that do not make them uh, live up to their potential because they then focus more or less you know, on the cup competition. But they have been a sensational team, especially in 2020-2024. I would say they have been even better than Inter overall, bringing back a Euro European trophy, a first trophy for Atalanta since the Coppa Italia in the 60s, is a major, major achievement. You can only say this was a highly successful season for Atalanta, finishing also in fourth place. Yes, you had the chance for third, but it's fourth. Juventus, two halves, two halves. You were the only contender left for Inter for a long time. But just before the head-to-head, -head, it started to break and you started losing points. And you can see the rise, 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 and then it all went to SHIT. Yes, at the end you salvage a third or third place, but you should have finished comfortably in second, which you never did, and then Milan overtook that. So it's a very up and down season for Juve. There is a silver lining, and that's called Coppa Italia, because you won at least one trophy. However, then Allegri went AWOL and needed to be sacked. Milan, you see that right around the second international break, they were actually slight favorites over Inter to win it. Despite having lost the Derby 5, I won, but Inter just had lost to Sassuolo and were hitting the only really rough patch. And then it all came apart. And Milan's season is very much up and down. However, the squad is secure in a second spot. They are overall the second best team in Italy, even though the end of the season, and this was a major turning point, I think, for Pioli not getting renewed, is that there were too many downs. You see the downturn, you know, October, november -y. Then you see the downturn towards the end of, of the season. There was also a mid-season downturn. So it was always, you did not know what to think about Milan, except that they can beat anyone except Inter again on the day. But I think the biggest disappointment is that you again lost two derbies, that was never going to fly, that Inter have the second star, that's a negative, that you got eliminated from the Champions League, that you got eliminated from the Coppa Italia, although you had a lead against Adelante and had them squarely under control. And then you lost to Roma in the Europa League quarterfinals with never even having a shot in there. Let's also be honest about that one. And so this kind of makes it a not so good season despite finishing a second spot. And I think even five years ago, I would have taken a second spot anytime. Which leaves us with the, without doubt, best team in Italy this season, which was Inter. I mean, their title, yes, it needed... Derby win laid on to secure the title, but everyone knew as soon as Juve fell off, there's no way that Inter is not going to win this title. They were an imperious team. I think if they would have kept up the form, they could have been one of the all-time great Serie A sides. With the finish to the season, where you see at the end it's kind of <laughs> topping out a little bit and then even landing slide because they had already won the title so early on. You let go of the opportunity. I think 100 points were in there. Easily, you could have reached for the stars there. Also, another negative and probably another reason why it did not go so high is, yes, I let the Coppa Italia slide, but Champions League, 
you had Atletico in the back. And honestly, if they beat Atletico, the way that the draw panned out, it will be Inter in the final against Real Madrid. There's no doubt about that. However, it was not to be. Still, second star, it can only, only be a success, it's the first championship for Simone Inzaghi, so he should be the big star of this one, of course, your Barrelas and Cialanoglu's and your Lautaro Martinez's are the big stars there, but Inter were just imperious, and as a Milan fan, it's really hard to say this, but it's the truth. Having said that now, let's look at who are the overall best performers. We got a little bit of an idea or, or, or already, but here is again the season standings where you see on the right side kind of the bars who is positive, who is negative. You see the big red for Napoli, clearly the worst team. You also kind of have the feeling that Bologna and Inter did really, really, really well, as did Genoa. But before, on the left side, we have again sum summarized with Inter as the champions, Milan Champions League, Juve win the Cop Coppa Italia, go also the Champions League groups at Atalanta, of course, thanks to winning the Europa League, go group stage of the Champions League, Bologna, first time in the Champions League. Then the two Roman teams go in the Europa League groups, where Fiorentina again have to make it through the playoff. Will they make a third Conference League final in a row and maybe this time win it? That would be fine. Sanitana, Sassuolo and Frosinone go down. Parma, Coma, Venezia going up. The new season starts August 17. So have that in mind. And now let's sort it. Bologna. Bologna had the best performance given their preseason expectations. They have almost 20 points more, at least here around it, uh, 20, 20 points more than was expected preseason. Inter starting at a really high, high level cannot really exceed that one there that, that easily, but also Genoa and Atalanta, really, really, really good seasons. On the bottom, Udinese, yeah, not looking good. We had Sassuolo, of course, going on, Salantana and Napoli, a horrific title defense, cannot be worse. Let's put an end to Serie A. I will continue talking about Serie A. You know it's my favorite league, despite not having the right champion this time around, but it's still a league that I absolutely love. And with the additions that we got this season, it, uh, really, really happy. As I said, Parma, great club back. We have Como. I've never seen Como play, but uh, very interesting. And I'm looking forward to see matches at their stadium. And of course, Venezia. I mean, whenever you see a Venezia game and you see the Lagoon, Cannot be better. Any case, let me know your thoughts on this Serie A season. Give me a thumbs up. Enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these. And I will talk to you soon with more things in my soccer universe. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.